Hello everybody, my name is Kedem, welcome back from the video of Suzerain. We're gonna continue this series, boys. Really loving the first part for the, the game and stuff. The prologue was fantastic. You get to uh, create your own backstory and stuff like that. Uh, we created ourselves as being more of a socialist type of guy, but at the same time, uh, being all for the nation. So we'll see what we can do. We are finally uh the chancellor whatever it's called the president of our country so let's see what we got two weeks have passed since we won the election and now i was about to be sworn in as the fourth president uh thousands were watching to uh, the integration ceremony and cheering my name anton rain uh the the die was cast all right let's do our thing boys the die was cast and there was uh, there my story began in the distance, the Maroon Palace stood on the top of the famous Hill Pride. I had no way of knowing what future awaited me there. I looked at my family, my son and daughter, Frank and Dina, were next to Monica, my wife. Uh, her eyes were glimmering with pride. Then I turned towards the key people who made it all possible. Of course, each individual was promised an important position in my cabinet. As my thoughts slowly faded away, the reality of the situation down on me. Orso Ocker, this guy, chief, uh, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court was waiting for me. Alright, so what does he say? The time for the oath has come. Alright, so I gotta swear in my oath. I'm ready. It has indeed. Let's start. Uh, I'm ready. Please repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear. Uh, that I would respectfully execute the office of the president of Swordland and uh, to the best of my ability preserve protect and defend there you go I'll say the same thing boys uh, preserve, the, uh, preserve protect and defend the people and the constitution boys the Republic of Swordland okay uh, you may now deliver your integration speech mr. president all right so thank you it's an honor uh, let's begin all right thank you all right, thank you, Mr. Ocker. All right, so dear citizens, brothers and sisters, my and my fellow swords, I I'm going to say brothers and sisters, all right? I want them to be my family. Everyone is my family. We're all together. We're all from the same people. The brothers and sisters. There we go. The crowd looked very eager to listen to me. The idea of unity, the current dire situation, change and hope. The idea of unity, there we go. For me, for many generations, this country and its longer its long history has kept us tied to an idea. The idea of unity in our people's right for a free and prosperous life. Exactly. If we stand together, we will prevail. The issue uh, that plagues us, our capabilities. If we stand together, we'll prevail. Exactly. So in the past, there have been, have been times of survivals, times of conflict. An economic hardship too but whenever we stood together we prevailed all right so I promise you we will stop the recession and eliminate pro poverty I can't promise that I can't promise that that is not a promise I can't make uh, the future awaits us Swordland is above all in the world first we must rewrite our broken Constitution we must rewrite the Constitution exactly so first we must rewrite the Constitution it is time for a united and powerful Swordland once again. Change now, not in the next decade or years, today. Our cap cap capacity as a nation has never been greater. We gotta change now. Exactly. Alright, so hundreds of thousands cheered. Uh, they were shouting my name in unison. I felt the responsibility, the power and the burden all at the same time. Raise fist. <laughs> Raise the fist, okay. That seems a bit uh, something else, boys. Uh, wave. Enjoy the moment. I'm just going to enjoy the moment. There we go. Taking a, be uh, a deep breath in. I enjoyed the moment. I, to I, I took a long look at the people of Sordon to burn this moment into my memory. One of the presidential guard came by to notify that it was time to leave. I made my way by the, uh, to the leading car in the, mo in the motorcade. Presidential state car was a jet black Kedela. Uh, with flags of Swordland above the front uh, headlights. Next to it, a man was holding the door. All right, so uh, Sergey uh, Walkner. Hello, Mr. President. 
Still under the effect of the speech I made, hearing my uh, new title made me smile. Okay. Uh, if you allow me to introduce myself, I'm Sergey, your new driver. All right. Nice to meet you. Uh, Adi, Sergey. It's a pleasure. All right. It's a pleasure. There you go. So the pleasure is all but mine. All right. Uh, he respectfully bowed his head but before opening the car and door, a uh, car door and gesturing inside. I entered the car. We will be heading towards the palace. All right, my new home, boys, a palace. A uh, motorcade began to move. On the way, Sergey proceeded to explain his duties as a driver. As minutes passed by, I found myself lost in thoughts again, barely paying attention to what he was saying. He suddenly made a gesture towards the now closer palace. Isn't it a beauty? The Maroon Palace. All right, so what do we got? Ah, oh, there we go. Beautiful, boys. Look at the Maroon Palace. Looks like a bit Turkish type of boy, right? Uh, are we in Turkey or something? Alright, what is this? He was right. Sunlight lit up the palace ma many maroon. Colored domes. Uh, it was so bright that I, uh, I had to look away. Every time I look at it, I rem I'm reminded of my duty to this nation. It's in good hands now. So do I. It is the uh, beating heart of the nation. Uh, we all owe a great debt to the man who led the country from here. It's just a building. Yeah. I don't know if it's just a building. Uh, it's in good hands. I'll say it's in good, uh, good hands. All right, so I'm sure of that, Mr. President. The car drove past the majestic gate, continued uphill to the entrance, and stopped in front of the doors. Sergey got out of the car and opened the door for me. Have a great day, Mr. President. I'm Morgna with, uh, with car. Okay, whatever that means. He referred to the famous swordish phrase from the times of revolution. A Morda was Kor, Victor Sidas. All right, uh, which meant morning will come, victory as uh, is close. All right, so goodbye. See you soon. I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna reply in the native uh, language, I guess. I made my way upstairs through the extravagant corridors of the palace, marble and en engraved wooden finishes decorated the interior. My footsteps echoed in the colossal halls. The guards be uh, bowed their heads in respect then as I opened the massive doors to my uh, office. So we, are been, we have been sworn in as president. It is now uh, our duty, time to do our thing. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of stuff right here. So if we take a look, I don't know exactly what's, what's what. We got a lot of budget, wealth, country overview. As you can see, we got the country overview. Uh, BFF ban, so ex-president and our founder declared the, uh, the Bloodish Freedom Party to be uh, a legal criminal organization to do their secessionist activities. Okay, so uh, so this is a law. This has been banned. The president uh, may veto bills. So these are all the little things that we can't do. The, the little actual laws and stuff. Active politics, economy. All right, so that's what we are. Military, uh, freedom, all this good stuff. Welfare, uh, freedom and curriculum. All right, uh, I want a Renan welfare principles. All right, I, I want some good stuff. All right, so let's see what we got. It's a country overview and stuff. Uh, political overview. So this is what's going on here. Uh, yeah, so, so this is, are all my cabinet, the people in my cabinet, Minister of Health, all these people, the factions, the uh, old guard, the oligarchs, the reformists, all these people, okay. Uh, we've got the legislative, so the seats in the Senate and stuff like that. All right, we got all that in the judiciary. Uh, so the judges, the seats. All right, so that seems uh, interesting. I'm not sure how good I'm going to be at this, but we'll see, boys. I'm not much of a good political guy. We'll see those settings. Uh, fine, that's all fine. All right, so uh, what's going on here? We've got a couple of stuff, as you can see, if we take a look around. Uh, we got some notes right here. Uh, this seems to be our land. Not entirely sure what's what. Uh, I'm not sure if everything's our land right here, but uh, we've got a lot of stuff to do. So let's take a look around uh, a little bit. So let's let's go over here first. Let's press on the uh, the capital or palace. All right. So read the report from Olsorf. Read the report from uh, okay. So uh, log logistical issues. Briefing on the current political situation. Briefing on the current economic situation. All right, so uh, let's read the report first. Logical, uh, logistical issues. What is this? 
The mayor of all sorts reports that the ra rising population and fast urban expansion has resulted in high levels of, con of congestions in the city traffic. The logistic report underlines increased traffic and slow transportation routes as the big biggest problem of the capital. All right, all right. Uh, the mayor also reported that the absence of well-designed large land-based logistics center where uh, all transporters come together is one of the greatest problems for domestic transporters uh, because it's a big metropolis, okay. Uh, scattered all around at the sub uh, in 10 different districts, okay. All right, I got you. I got you for that one. What about this? The report from the st staff gathers. So the general staff uh, convened right after the election to contract, congr congratulate our victory. All branches of those uh, armed forces were represented in the meeting that took place at the camp with uh, massive security measures. The chief of the armed uh, forces made a public press a statement highlighting the increasing chances of military confrontation in eastern Mekorpa and uh, requested support to strengthen the mili uh, military. Where's the, uh, where's the confrontation? Mr. Eastern, uh, Eastern whatever you call uh, Mr. Mecca, whatever. I, I, I don't see, see, I, I don't see uh, where, where it would be, so I'm not sure, boys. Um, so we're just gonna chill out for a little bit. Is it like a city or something? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, let's see. All right, so what do we got? The other one? Briefing. So what is this? Uh, Peter Wagner arrived. Also, oh, this is my uh, this is my friend right here. This is my friend. Okay, the the vice president boys uh, arrived a couple of minutes early and sat across uh, sat across from me. He was trying to hold back his smile. We did it, Anton. We won finally. All those years with our nose to the grindstone paid off. Peter's eyes sparkled. The strain of past months has but have put a damper in his usual rakish charm, but today he was looking and acting more like his old self. He's lo he loosened his tie and undid the top two buttons on this, of his shirt. Enjoying the new secretary I picked up for you, uh, picked out for you. Thought you appreciate her gorgeous set of talents. It's a shame the rest of your, our staff ours, uh, aren't as easy on the eyes. What are you talking about? Who's my secretary? He gestured to the slight punch that produced uh, over his waistband. Uh, band. But hey, back in university, do you ever imagine we would be sitting here in the Maroon Palace? We have to celebrate the, this great victory. Let's celebrate then. I got my hands on something special. Uh, Maroon, 30 years old. I don't drink, boys. We will celebrate uh, at the Energo Ball. Just hang in there until the evening. This is not the time to celebrate. We have to work. Yeah, we have work to do. We got to start working right now. Let's go. Yes, I agree. We've got things to do today. We can let loose the, at the ball. Uh, let's move on to uh, with the meeting. We will be talking about our political strategy for this term. Lucian and I had a meeting with the party and reformists. Uh, we mostly said I to high, but I would want to know what you think. All right, so I hope uh, things are looking good. Great. Let's get over this uh, when Lucian arrives. Let's see uh, if I... All right, let's, uh, let's do that, boys. Let's uh, get out of it. Right. So there's Lucian. He arrives. Yeah, that's uh, Lucian himself. So the chief strategist. What, what would you got with him? The door swung open and Lucian Galladay, my chief strategist, walked in. He was a compact man with shark bird-like features. After briefly surveying the room from wall to wall, he sat down, poured a glass of water and opened his briefcase in a series of quick, graceful movements. Gentlemen, all right, the tell, a call, tall case, uh, case clock uh, in the room struck three o'clock. Damn, you are exactly on time. Hello, Peter. All right, Lucian then turns towards me. He very slightly bowed his head. Uh, glad to see you, Lucian. Lucian, how are you? Let's not waste any time. You should proceed with the interview, uh, the overview. As you wish, sir. All right, so Lucian spoke in soft, clipped tones. I immediately drew your attention towards what he had to say. Peter and I waited for him to proceed. Let's start with evaluating our current situation. The majority of the Swordish people demand change. They are more concerned about the economy than the constitution itself, but they blame the system for their problems. All right. Uh, the people are losing their trust in our democracy. Why do you think radicals like Bernard Sickers are becoming more popular? Everyone's expecting us to bring the change to uh, the last government, uh, government did not. Bernard Sickers. All right. 
Sodesh poet, novelist, short story writer and politician is acclaimed for his lyrical flow. Okay, he's an avant-garde. Uh, romantic communist. All right, well, he's a communist. He should be on my side then. I'm a communist as well. We're on the same side here. All right, so let's see what we got. Uh, Frank Richter, leader of the reformists, believes that the true change can only be accomplished by transferring, transferring some of our powers to the assembly. I will move into the details of their demands shortly. So they want to, us to share power with the uh, legislative, the, uh, legislative assembly boys, which is basically the Senate. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. I agree with the reformists. Our responsibility is to democratize, uh, democratize our broken system. Nope. We do not want to democratize the system. We want to make it better. Uh, democracy is democracy is not a better system. It's just a system that seems to be. It's a it's a patch basically. It's like a plaster. You don't want to patch the system. You want to fix it. So we're not going to go for democracy. We need to listen to the people if we want to serve this country. We if we lose, we won't be able to execute the changes we need to make the good for our country. No, we need to listen to the people if we want to serve this country. We will need many allies against the old guard in the government. Yeah, the old guard is basically the ones that are authoritarian and stuff. Uh, Mr. Richter, uh, Richter managed to persuade many members of the assembly to give their support for drafting at a new constitution. Reformist politicians are quickly increasing my number. In number, okay. Write the reformist wing. Uh, while the reformist wing inside our party is still a minority, they, they could have a tripartisan majority in the uh, assembly, especially if they unite under Frank, uh, Frank Richter. Who is this Frank Richter fella? Uh, Justice uh, Flatter. Who is he? Human's rights. Oh, watch over human's rights. He is with us as well. Okay, he's in the human's rights. Okay. Uh, USP reformists aren't wrong to agree, uh, argue, agree with what uh, that we need change, but we should be in charge. Uh, Mr. Richter could be a, a potential ally in our goal to maintain a majority of the, uh, in the assembly. Our people, uh, our party must fall in line with our position. We can't have strong, uh, uh, have a strong divide. Yeah, I'm just going to say that instead. Yeah, our party must not, uh, it, it, it's got to fall in line. If we are a minority, we are a minority. It doesn't matter. I'll do with what I got, right? I'll do with what I got. True, if our party fractures, it's the opposition that will benefit. The reformist demand are clear. They want to limit the president's veto powers, ensure that the Supreme Court is, the, is independent and take away the court's rights to vote on constitutional, constitutional amends. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. We'll see. Uh, Supreme Court is independent. I do want the Supreme Court to be independent, but the whole court's right thing... I want to keep that. Uh, I support the reformists. We need a proper balance of power in this country. We must listen to their demands. Otherwise, we are no different than the previous administration. I won't allow, uh, allow them to influence me. We will shape our own future. Uh, I support the reformists. We need a proper balance. I'm not going to allow them to influence me. I'm going to shape my own future. I'm going to do whatever I want. All right. I agree, sir. The old guard will do its best to preserve the constitution. Chief Justice Ocker and his allied ju judges have a great influence over the Supreme Court, we, which will be uh, uh, tough to break. The court also has the final say over the constitutional uh, legislation. Without their approval, we cannot even change it. We need the Supreme Court to agree with us uh, on the Constitution, boys, so we need to have them on our side. We'll need a comprehensive bill to balance the power structure more fairly. We must break the power of the spring curve one way or another. I'd rather not go against them. The risks are too high. Uh, we'll need a comprehensive bill to balance the power structure more fairly. Let's, I'd rather not go against them. I don't want to go against them. We need to work with the spring curve one way or the other. Exactly. True. But we can't let the old guard manipulate us and then backstab us like they did with Alfonso. Uh, looks like we have many challenges ahead. We cannot allow obstructionists to exist. We uh, can't underestimate this situation. We cannot allow obstructionists to exist. Exactly, boys. We can't figure it out. Our party still holds 130 out of 250 seats in the assembly. We got, we've got the power. All right, so we got, we got uh, enough power, I guess. 
Uh, however, to reform the, uh, to reform the constitution, we must receive a two-thirds of the majority, uh, which is 163, uh, 66 votes, and a simple majority in the sim uh, uh, Supreme Court that it, uh, equates to six votes. Okay, so we need six votes for the Supreme Court and 166 votes in the Assembly. And we only have 130 seats. So we got to work on 33, 36 more votes, boys. That's interesting. So after we have settled on our, how to proceed, we will need to talk with our party figures. Our first goal must be to get 150 signatures needed to start the process. Following the green light from uh, the USP, we will reach out to uh, other party uh, leaders to see if they would back our draft. The last step is to convince the justice of the court. The entire process will take a long time, but we must start working with a reform committee to ev evaluate all possibilities for a new constitution as soon as possible. All right, so we will write a more democratic constitution with the reformists. The new constitution should, should give the present wide-ranging powers to lead Sodan into the future. We could work with the old guard to protect our existing exi uh, extensive powers. No, I'm going to do this new constitution will give us uh, the will give the president wide-ranging powers to lead the Sodan into the future. I want that, boys. So that's very bold. Then we must start by uh, with eliminating the Supreme Court's authority over constitutional legislation and perhaps take their humanity. Uh, immunity away exactly don't forget the reformists want us to address the loopholes in the presidential veto system uh, i will not limit my veto powers we need them they can remain some reform is better than none of course it, it will be looked at in detail uh, i think they can remain some reform is better than none exactly peter looked trouble all right so it will be very difficult to plead that case uh, to the reformists Taking away the legislative uh, power of the Supreme Court while holding your own absolute authority over the legislation would li look like an attempt to consolidate your own power. Well, isn't what I'm trying to do, buddy. That's exactly what I'm trying to do. Uh, we would lose all reformist uh, support. We can package it as democratic reform. Exactly. We can make, we can, be, we can uh, tell the people, oh, it's for the democratic side. You know, we can be, we can juke them. We can, we can play the people. People are dumb boys. They're gonna, they're gonna play on our side, whatever. No matter what you say, I intend to come out as this, as this strong as the president. We can surely agree on some subjects. All right, surely we can agree on some subjects. Come on now. Uh, according to the initial draft we made with the reformers, there are two changes that, to the constitution that are not open for their discuss, uh, discussion. Lucian opened his dossier. First, the Supreme Court will no longer vote on constitutional amendments. That's what they want. Second, the president uh, absolute veto will be taken away. This can be replaced with a limited veto system by fixing the, fixing the current loopholes. I have no problem with these causes. Let's work with the reformers. I'd rather not include either of those points. Not include any, any of those. I'm okay with the, the the Supreme Court not having as much power. But me not having a veto? It's a no-go. I'm gonna have my veto. I'm keeping my veto, boys. You can forget about that. The reformers can fuck off with that. They're not gonna get rid of my veto. That will not be accepted by reformers. This draft has been created with the advice of both our party and the, uh, the, the, the other party, I guess, uh, the People's Freedom, I guess, uh, members. Keeping your absolute veto over legislation but taking away the Supreme Court influence over the Assembly will make it look like a power grab. Uh, the reformists are pretty loud about their thoughts on the presidential powers, Inton. You know they think their disposition breeds dictators. I don't care what they think. We can handle them. Yeah. All we can do, if they bring us trouble, we can just literally ban their party altogether. I don't care what they think. You're right. Let's address their demands. We need to address other more important problems too. I don't care what they think. All right. They can kick, kiss my ass for all that. For all I care. I can ban them if I need to. To clarify before we head into a particular direction. What are your intentions, sir? We must strengthen the state by removing the power of the old guard. The president needs to be able to exercise his power with ease to maintain stability. 
I want to minimize the, uh, the damage to my seat. No, the president needs to be able to exercise his powers with ease to maintain the stability, boys. We need to be able to do whatever we want. So let's do that. I understand we do not have to remove your veto. Instead, we can discuss limiting it to re uh, with the reformists. Exactly. We can limit the veto. Removing it altogether is a no-go. I'm not going with that. No, I will only support a new constitution that strengthens my position. Fair enough. Let's work with the reformists. Then I don't then I don't intend to pursue constitutional change. We will reach out. No, no, no. Fair enough. It's fair enough. I want a new constitution. I just don't want to have my veto get rid of entirely. All right. Let's let's meet in the middle. All right. Let's see what we got. As you wish, we will move forward on that. Uh, Lucian nodded. We will ref uh, form a reform committee together with all parties and start reaching out to all the st uh, uh, stakeholders in the assembly and the court for a new constitution. By the later, later in the by later in the year, uh, later in the year, we should have an idea of the reform contents and what the other parties want. Uh, Lucian took notes. Another important point: we must be aware of the Luderberg group. The oligarchs convene under the organization to influence economy, economic policies. Conrad led it for a long time before falling hill. The new leader is uh, Mr. Walter Tusk. This guy. All right. And the group, the uh, Luderberg group. Okay, got you. Uh, all right. So according to reports, some members of the National Business Council are in the po their pockets. Tusk in the group will surely try to bribe, uh, bribe us in exchange for special economic protections. They're not gonna get any. I can already tell you I'm not getting bribed. That's not gonna happen. Uh, I, want, uh, I want to work with them anyway. The new administration will be uh, open to talk to businessmen. I won't be bought out. It won't be happen. Uh, I will enter a dialogue with them. Eventually we need to be diplomatic. We won't let these privileged, greedy, and snobby capitalists run the country. Exactly. No capitalist bullshit. Bull, um, bullshit uh, people are going to be in my country. That's not going to happen. Uh, let not, let's not under, uh, underestimate their influence. They are not armless people either. Uh, Lucian looked at Peter. As far as I know, Marshal Caranti has some strong ties to this group. His influence, uh, influence could definitely be an asset for us. But I'm sure he'll want something in return. Well, uh, whatever we can give him. I'm aware of Mr. Caranti's white network that could uh, come in Indy. Goop's influence is an important force. Uh, once, that we, once that we should use to our administration advantage. The, that group is, in the, is dependent on our economic uh, policies. They can't move a finger without us. Tusk is heading uh, the group. We should make sure he's on our side. The, the group is in, uh, is dependent on our economic police policies anyways, yeah. Without us, they can't do shit, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I wouldn't be so, uh, so optimistic. The capital they represent could do a lot of damage if it was diver diverted. Uh, we need to tread carefully on all sides with all, uh, with all pl players, uh, power players to survive our terms. I need to underline the seriousness of the seriousness of the situation. The military and the general staff are, are a powerful element in this state. And uh, as history tell us, a dangerous one too. We do have some room to make structural changes by reducing their budget, for example, but it's uh, quite limited. I want to receive the, uh, the advice of the military before making up my mind. I don't want to die in prison just like Arthur. Uh, with the rumbled threat on the horizon, we can't uh, we can't reduce our defense capability and anger our general staff. Military has been nothing but a burden on our society. We should do nothing. No, no, no. Uh, I want to work closely with my military. Um, if you have one thing, boys, the one thing that's the most important in life when you're uh, a leader, you gotta have military on your side. If you don't have soldiers, if you don't have the military on your side, you're screwed. You're screwed. As, as soon as you don't have it on your side, it's over for you. You don't have anything. You don't have a country without your military, so it's over. So I gotta work closely with my military. I want to receive advice from my military first. First and more uh, foremost, I want to work closely with them. It is, uh, it is sound to listen to them, but they have a very biased and narrow opinions. Patriotism, uh, patriotism clouds their minds. The general is a specter of the past. 
uh, Defense Minister uh, Lingxia is more loyal to us compared to the general. A fact that obviously can change with our actions. Either way, I see a potential rift between the two since they are clearly of different minds. If we hack strongly against the military, both of those guys will unite against us. I agree with Lucian. We need to tread carefully here. Uh, Lucian looked at his watch. Well then, gentlemen, precisely 30 minutes. This concludes our political briefing for today. Our next meeting will be about uh, our media strategy. Uh, talk to you soon, sir. I will keep in touch. See you both, uh, both at the next morning, uh, meeting. Lucian and Peter bid their farewells and left. All right, game saved. So we've had our meeting, boys. Uh, we've got some newspaper as well. So you, we can take a look at the news, boys. Jill political. So political side, Roomba coming south. From political uh, analyst. So annexation of Dome many decades ago. Uh, economists, radicals. You can see another USP president supporting the assembly. So that we got the newspapers as well and everything. We still got something right here. Read the report, public opinion report. So uh, we still got a meeting with uh, a meeting to do on the media strategy, and we got to do a briefing on the current economic situation, boys. Uh, so let's just read the report really quick. The public opinion report. People's views on the need uh, uh, for democratic reform in the government structure has changed over the last decade. Reformist propaganda from the leader of the Poppy People's Freedom and Justice Party, Frank Richter have resulted in a massive increase in their demands for democratic reforms. It is estimated that currently 55% of the population supports the reformist ideas. That's all right, since, especially since I'm going for the, the, uh, a new constitution, right? So that's okay. I'm not too sure what uh, is going to happen next, but I do want to go for the constitution. Uh, I do want to work with the reformists, but not as much as they want. They want, like, they really want to get rid of everything. I want to keep some of the good stuff. I'm staying in the middle, boys, a tweener guy. So we'll see how this uh, is going to lead up. Remember to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys for the next one. Keep it easy.